I've been asked to um, speak a little bit about the relationship between uh, power animals and the Vedic uh, seven chakra system. Um, the question pertains um, if it should be like this that there is a specific power animal governing each of our chakras and is there a problem or a disturbance if another animal would govern such a chakra. Well this is a little bit of a complex thing to answer because there's not a true answer which applies to everybody. Uh, the first thing we should realize is that um, our current existing chakra system from a shamanic perspective is very flexible. If we are in a very human configuration we have seven chakras. If a shaman however goes through a process of transformation and becomes one with one of their power animals, they will no longer have seven chakras. They may have 27 chakras or they may have two, three, four chakras. So the energetic body of a shaman should be very flexible and should be able to uh, well, merge chakras into yeah, uh, a, a fewer number or to split chakras into a greater number depending on what animal they're uh, in a way taking the form of with their energy bodies. But let's assume for a moment that the shaman himself or herself wants to stay in human configuration. Every of their chakras corresponds to a fragment of their personality and it is actually by the dominant personality fragment that we attract a power animal to ourselves. Um, it is very simple, it is like magnets, a sim uh, certain energy will attract a similar energy. So if I am like a bear myself, I will attract as a power animal the bear. If I am like a snake myself, I will attract as power animal a snake. If I'm like a spider, I will attract a spider. So our ability to attract a power animal really depends on the development of that characteristic in ourselves. Um, this also means that most people who do not work on themselves at all, uh, they never develop a very strong personality. They don't really reach the level of energy uh, to actually attract any power animal. Um, there's also a little bit of discussion in shamanic circles whether a person should try to work with just one power animal or whether they should be working with several power animals. The group which says we should work with one power animal have a very good reason for this. Um, they believe that we as a shaman have to be as harmonious as possible and that we as humans tend to be already quite fragmented and confused. And if we start working with different power animals, we're actually giving power to different elements in our being and the chaos which we are already experiencing will just become amplified by our power animals, uh, also all giving us different types of advice. And they feel it is better to just focus on what is the dominant part of your own being, what is the dominant part of your personality, and reinforce the already dominant part of your personality by working with that specific power animal for all purposes. And then you, in a way, learn how to do things in the way of that animal and to do all the different tasks like healings, readings, um, exercises using that animal form because every animal form is ultimately capable of doing everything. So they believe it's better to go in depth with that animal and therefore and then also have a very much more stable energy body. Other people uh, propose that um, since we are ourselves very complex beings and having gone often through many incarnations we actually carry parts of all these different animals or all the different beings and personalities 
within ourselves. So we have a little zoo, a little menagerie in our own being. And the only way to get to control ourselves, to get to understand who and what we are, is to understand all the other different fragments, their relationship with each other. So to really get a good view of your own inner ecology, which chakras fight with each other, which chakras agree with each other, and ultimately to find out how we can get this ecology to work for us instead of against us. So it is a lot more complex to work with various power animals than with just the one. Um, every chakra has its own vibration, but it cannot be said that every chakra has its own personality structure. So you can't pin a one-on-one -on -one relationship to um, a certain chakra being related to one specific animal. So you can, in general, say the lower chakras are very connected to your ability to ground, to your power, to your hidden uh, parts. And you can say that the middle set of chakras is all about communication, about sharing, about sensitivity, and that your upper chakras are very much about knowing, understanding, um, wisdom. So you can have more or less categories of animals because your chakras themselves are also within a certain category. But for instance, if I look at my crown chakra, well, should there be an eagle or a raven or a hawk there? It's all possible, depending on what you attune to. And if you have an eagle, you are very likely to attune to the Great Spirit. Um, if you have a hawk, you're very likely to attune to smaller spirits. And if you have a raven, you're very likely to attune actually to yeah, those spirits of the people who've passed on. So it's all one chakra. But depending on the tendency of the chakra, uh, you will also need to find another animal guide to help you to develop that chakra and to use it to the best of your ability. So I don't feel that there is such a, um, a system that it is completely fixed. But if you're going to switch animals, then it can be a little bit tricky um, because as I said, the lower chakras, they're very much there to give you stability and give you power. If those animals would climb up, then instead of being wise and being enlightened and inspired, you would probably become obsessed by power or obsessed by fear. And you would very likely have a mental illness because this is not how your higher chakras are supposed to function. They're supposed to be very flexible, very open not very phobic or neurotic, as would happen when the animals which govern the lower chakras would rise up to the higher chakras. So there is a little bit of care which you should uh, have there, so that your chakras yeah, keep on fulfilling their purpose. Um, as to acquiring a power animal to guide every specific fragment of your being, uh, this is rather unusual. People tend to attract one power animal and sometimes they will have two or three, but I've rarely seen people who've had seven or more power animals. So I don't think it's a one-on-one it's -on -one relationship. Um, another thing which is also important to note is that within shamanism uh, there is no knowledge really of the Vedic seven chakra system. The Vedic system is not a shamanic system. Um, so you're in a way comparing things which are coming from a very different um, time period, uh, from a very different culture, and trying to blend them together. So of course it can be done because ultimately these higher structures like the Vedic culture and Christianity, they're built on shamanism. But yeah, the roof doesn't tend to be very similar to the basement. So there is, it's a little bit tricky to find a very good or healthy relationship between the two. It's very important to understand the role of shamanism. The role of shamanism is to teach us 
what powers do we have uh, to teach us self-control, self-mastery. And the Vedic system is not so much focused on self-mastery, but rather on understanding the cosmos and understanding the consequences of our actions. So it is, the Vedic system is a hermetic system, it's based on knowledge, on wisdom. But if you talk about shamanism, this is about the first messiah, the messiah of strength, the messiah of power, who is there to liberate our spirit. So our, li our spirit is no longer overcome by our feelings, by our thoughts, by our instincts, by our, by our fears. So shamanism is about self-liberation, not so much about wisdom or understanding the, the exact consequences of action. But we'll go a little bit more deeply into this division in the next couple of videos.